Good day everybody and once again we are back together and your favorite uncle is going to be looking at mathematics this time around. Uh, we are slowly moving towards the end of the year where we will be wrapping up in terms of uh, those exams. So if you haven't subscribed, please, please be part of this family. And um, obviously we are going to tell as many people as we can that your favorite uncle continues to be the plug. Uh, Please just like, share, and tell as many people as possible. Right, so I just wanted to, us to look at this question that has to do with, um, uh, um, you know, functions. Um, so please just make it a point that you do pay special attention to functions because they constitute uh, the biggest portion of your uh, paper one in mathematics, Okay. So let's do, let's go right ahead. I took this from the June 2021 question paper, which I have also uh, published some of the, um, you know, the previous uh, uh, questions. So I'll be continuing with question five this time around. All right, let's get right into the question. So they say, sketched below are the graphs of f of x, which is minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16 and g of x, which is 2x plus 4. All right, so there are the graphs there. They say A and B are the x-intercepts and C is the turning point of F. All right, let's go right into the question. So they say calculate the coordinates of A and B. So in this case, we are looking at the x-intercepts. Now remember, they've given us the equation there. So what happens at the x-intercept? So we know this is going to be F of x. That's minus 2x squared. Uh, plus 4x plus 16, right? But we know we're looking at the x-intercepts. This is where y is equal to 0, okay? So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by negative, uh, or in fact, divide everything by negative 2. So I'll end up with uh, x squared. Remember, if I divide by negative, it changes sign. So two divided, 4 divided by 2 uh, is 2. So this is going to be minus 2x, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. So in this case, uh, that changes sign as well, right? So let's find in this case, we're going to factorize, okay? And uh, I, uh, since I promised you, uh, you know, a video on factorization, I'll get to that eventually, okay? So factors of 8, such that when we subtract them, right, they give us 2, that's going to be 4 and 2. And of course, when our constant term is negative, it means the signs are not the same, right? They're different within your brackets. And in this case, the sign of the bigger product will give you, uh, um, you know, the sign of the middle term. So which one is your bigger product, 4x and 2x? Your bigger product is definitely 4x. So in this case, 4x gets to be negative, uh, meaning that uh, 2x will become uh, positive, okay? So it means that x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 2, okay? Right, so remember we're looking for the coordinates. So it means that the coordinates of a, remember, a, you can see it's on the negative side, right? So it means that that's going to be negative 2 and 0, okay? And the coordinates of b uh, in this case would be 4 and 0 zero okay right now let's go right into the next one so they say to us we are looking um they say determine the coordinates of c the turning point uh, of f now remember when we're looking for the turning point there are two ways of doing that okay uh, first one we can take um you know minus b over uh, 2a or we can take the derivative or alternatively we can take uh, you know, the midpoint of the two x-intercepts, right? All right, so let's uh, find out. Okay, so this was 5.1. Let's go to 5.2. Okay, so remember, we've got f of x, uh, which is minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. So if I take x turning point, which is minus b over 2a, uh, our b value is positive 4, so that, uh, sorry, that's positive 4, uh, divided by 2 times our a value is negative 2, 
So needless to say, you'll get negative 4 divided by negative 4, which will give you 1, right? Now, to get the y value of the turning point, I substitute that x value into the original equation, right? So that's f of 1, uh, that's minus 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 uh, plus 16. Um, that's going to be negative 2 plus 4 uh, plus 16. And I'm sure you can see how that will give us 18. So it means that the coordinates of our turning point, I believe that was point C, yes. Okay, our turning point will be C is 1 and 18. Okay, so that's the value of our turning point, right? Let's go into the next question. They say write down the range of F. Now remember, the range is where the graph exists in the uh, Y's, right? So um, you can see that obviously the graph wouldn't exist beyond 18. Remember that our turning point is 18. So the, the graph, the maximum value would be 18. So uh, actually it exists from 18 and below, right? So how we're going to write that down is uh, x, um, so that's 5.3, so it means actually y, sorry, uh, that's the y in uh, y values. So y uh, would be an element of, now uh, remember we always write, when we write it in this format, we write it in ascending order, so meaning we start from the lowest value to the highest, so that's from minus infinity all the way up until, and by the way the round brackets uh, tell you that we are excluding uh, negative infinity, right? It means that, and the only reason is because, you know, uh, infinity is not a definite value, right? So um, we never include infinity. So up until 18, but remember 18 is a value, right? A real value on the graph. So we are going to include that, okay? Uh, it is a value that exists on the graph. Uh, alternatively, you can write this as y is less than or equal to 18, right? So that would also be uh, another way of writing that answer, right? And then let's go on to the next question. They say to us, um, the graph h of x is equals to fx plus p um, plus q um, and has a maximum value of 15 at x is equal to 2. Right, they say determine the value of P and Q. Now, so essentially what they have done is that they've taken the graph of uh, F of X and they shift it, you know, um, such that the maximum value is no longer 18 like it used to be, right? Um, and your uh, X value of the intercept is no longer at 1, uh, but now it is at... Uh, uh, at two, so let me write down the you know the 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 equation of f of x, you know um, in the you know in the format uh, a x a x minus p squared, right? So in this case, if we were to write it, it's going to be negative two. Remember the coefficient of x squared is minus two in this case. So into, this is going to be x minus 1. Remember, this represents the value of the, um, of, of the, x, value, the x value of the turning point, right? So that's x minus 1. And remember, it changes sign once you get it inside the bracket. Okay, squared plus, this is the y value of the turning point. Okay, so that's 18. Okay, so this is how we write f of x uh, in that format, right? Now, remember, now they say to us h of x or hx in this case um, is basically taking uh, um, f of x and we are shifting it by the value p and q such that the x value now becomes 2 and the y value becomes, um, the y value of the turning point becomes 15. So in order for the x value, so for the a, for h of x, in order for the uh, x value, to end up as minus 2. So what should we do to the, um, uh, you know, to, to x inside in this case? So it means for it to be minus 2, I'd have to add minus 1 to the original. Okay, so think about it. I had minus 1, but I want it to now become minus 2. So what did I do? I just added minus 1. 
okay? So this was the original f of x, but I'm adding minus 1 so that it now becomes hx, right? Plus uh, 18, in this case, I want this value to end up as 15, right? So what should I add? I should add uh, minus 3 in this case. So it means that I'm taking 18 minus 3, which should give me the uh, turning point uh, for, um, you know, for hx, right? So remember, this comes from f of x, okay? Um, and this comes from f of x, right? So in this case, what did I add that wasn't there before? It's the minus 1 and the minus 3, right? So I'm sure you can see how in this case it means that the value of p would be equal to negative 1 and the value of q would be equal to negative 3. I, I hope I explained it in such a way that it makes sense to you. Remember we said what we wanted here is that we should have minus 2. So what we did was we took the original, we added minus 1, and we want 15 here, so we took the original, we added minus 3 in this case. So that's the value for P and Q respectively. All right, now let's go into the next question. So they say to us, um, and by the way, you can download this question paper from our website. Okay, that's www.mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so uh, they say to us, um, determine the, the equation of g uh, prime minus 1, okay, uh, or g minus 1, the inverse of g in the form yx. Now, uh, remember, so our g is 2x plus 4, gx, right? So I'm going to write, okay, so uh, that's 5.5. .5. So remember g of x, okay, I'm going to write it in this way is y is equal to 2x plus 4. But now what happens? Remember when you take the inverse, right? And note this is not uh, the derivative. There's a difference between the inverse and the derivative. The derivative is g prime, right? Would be g prime. And in this case, g minus 1, uh, um, you know, uh, is uh, actually the inverse, right? So what you do to get the inverse is that you swap the x and the y value. So it means that it's going to be x is equal to 2y plus 4. So in this case, remember, we need to replace it back uh, or rather to express it back as y is equal to, right? So in this case, you'd have, if I take 4 to the other side, you'd have uh, 2y is equal to x minus 4. I'm sure you can see that, right? So I'm going to divide everything by 2 in this case. Um, so y is equal to 1 over 2x minus 2, okay? So that is the value of g prime, that in the form y is equal to mx plus c. All right, all right. Now, uh, let's go on to answering the next question. They say, for which values of x will g uh, minus 1, so the inverse graph, multiplied by the original graph, uh, uh, the linear graph, w when will they be equal to 0 when we multiply them? Now, I want you to think about it. When is something equal to 0? Any time that you multiply by 0, right? So in this case... I want you to think about it. Where is g prime, okay, the value of g prime equal to zero, right? Uh, and where, in fact, let's start with the original. Where is uh, our original graph uh, equal to zero, right? Where is the y value equal to zero? Uh, in this case, it would be at... Uh, at, at, at the at, at the x at, at the y intercept rather right so where is it uh, in fact sorry at the x intercept so y is equal to zero at the x intercept isn't it so in this case where is our x intercept uh, for the original graph okay so where would x be equal to zero um you know for uh, uh, um, you know the the original graph so x would be equal to 0, right? 
at uh, x is equal to 4. I mean, think about it, right? So, um, in this case, once we make x is equal to 0, you will left with x is equal to 4. But for the prime, uh, g prime, uh, or the inverse graph, weighs x equal, I mean, weighs uh, um, x equal to 0 at minus 2, okay? So, in that case, I want you to think about it. So, what we've got, okay, I hope I was able to explain it well, right? So, we want where g of x is equal to 0, okay? That's what I was saying. And we want the value where the inverse of this graph uh, is equal to 0, okay? Because once we multiply at that case, uh, in that case, that's where um, it will, the product will give us 0. So it means that will be at x is equal to 4, right? And it will also be at x is equal to negative 2. I hope uh, that explanation kind of makes sense uh, to you, right? Now let's go to the very last question, all right? So now... Um, they say px is equal to fx plus k, right? So they say determine the values of k for which p and g will not intersect. So I want you to think about it. When will they not intersect? So it means that we would need to shift, uh, you know, the original graph uh, of f of x, uh, you know, so low, we'd have to take it down up until it gets to a point. In fact, let me go to... So we'd have to shift it down up until a point, you know, there comes a point where uh, they would be equal here, but we need to shift it uh, until they do not meet, okay? So in this case, we don't want the graph of g of x to be equal to uh, f of x, okay? Uh, that's where they intersect. Remember, when they intersect, it means they're equal to each other, right? So we want to know how much should we shift it so that they will not intersect with each other, all right? Uh, and, you know, sometime, obviously, I will go through, um, you know, nature of roots, okay? But I will touch on it on this one. Uh, now, let's take the graph of f of x. Remember, uh, that's going to be uh, f of x plus k, right? Uh, remember, that's the value in which we are shifting it. So I'm going to say, well, that's minus 2x squared, uh, plus 4x plus uh, 16, right, plus k. So that's the value with which I'm shifting it. Where would it be equal to the original graph of g of x, which is 2x uh, plus 4, right? Now, let's try and uh, simplify everything such that we are just left uh, with, um, you know, just uh, the standard format of, the, of, of a quadratic equation. So there's only one x squared term, so that's minus 2x squared, okay? And then I've got 4x and 2x. When I take this to the other side, it becomes negative 2x. So that will be uh, 4x minus 2x, which will be uh, positive 2x. And I've got 16 on this side and 4 on this side. When I take 4 to the other side, it becomes negative, right? So 16 minus 4, that will give me 12, okay? plus k uh, is equal to zero. Now, of course, now we've got, uh, you know, the normal quadratic equation. If you want to, you can just multiply by a negative throughout. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm taking the discriminant, right? So wh when is, uh, when would uh, it be equal to zero? Or in this case, when do you have you know, any graph equal to zero. That's at the uh, x uh, intercepts. It means in that case, when you have real roots, what do we mean when we say real roots? It means there will be an x intercept, okay? This is where roots are real, right? Now, in this case, I want you to note, uh, we don't want to have real roots. So it means when we take, when do we not have real roots? When the discriminant is less than zero, okay? Why? Because if you think about, you know, your, um, your uh, the quadratic formula, uh, b squared minus 4ac, which is your discriminant in this case, 
Once this becomes less than zero, it means we cannot find a solution. Okay, it means uh, the graph does not cut through uh, the x-intercepts. So in that case, what it, what it simply means, uh, I want you to note, we're going to take the discriminant for this graph, okay, and make it less than zero, okay? So we're going to say, okay, so we're taking b squared minus 4ac uh, is less than zero. Why? Because once it's less than zero, it means there'll be no real roots. It means they will not intersect, okay? So our b value... Uh, that's going to be 2. So this is 2 squared minus 4 times our A value is negative 2. And our C value is 12 plus K uh, in this case. Okay. Uh, this should be less than 0. We're looking at inequalities in that case. So that's going to be 4. Okay. So that's going to be minus, A, uh, minus 4 times minus 2. That will give us 8 into 12 plus k uh, is less than zero okay um so let's try and so that's four uh, in that case uh so we're going to say eight multiplied by 12 okay let's see uh let's take out a calculator uh, so that's eight times 12 that will give us 96 uh, so we're going to say plus 96 plus 8k is less than 0. Okay, so that's going to be 100 plus 8k less than 0. Okay, so uh, in this case, I'm just dragging this out. Uh, 8k is less than 100. And I'm quite certain you can see we're going to divide both sides uh, by 8. So k is less than um, so if we take 100 divided by 8 uh, in this case that gives us 12.5 so uh, it would be less than oh my goodness i made a mistake here uh, remember that was supposed to be minus 100 when i took it to the other side okay so uh, k would be less than minus 12.5 so it means the k value you'd have to have a value that is much less than 12.5, meaning that you would have taken uh, the original graph uh, of f of x and, you know, take it below, in this case, 12.5 uh, units downwards, right? And that's how we would get that value there, okay? Right. Uh, there is another approach to this, uh, but, you know, that, that would be a kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of taking the longer route. Uh, what you can do is you can find, you know, the the gradient um, of, you know, the, the, yeah, the gradient of the straight line in this case, okay? And find where the gradient of the, uh, you know, where the gradients are equal, basically, uh, that of the straight line as well as that of the, uh, you know, so in a sense, you'd be taking the equation of a tangent, right? Um, yeah, uh, so kind of take where the graph would have the same gradient as the straight line, okay? Um, once you find that x value, uh, what you would do is you take that x value, substitute it back into the original equation of uh, uh, f, and substitute it back into the original equation of uh, g, and of course, take the difference between the two. But uh, I think this one is sufficient. I think I've explained it um, uh, well enough. All right. I hope that uh, it's been helpful, ladies and gents, and that you won't forget to subscribe and tell as many people. We're trying to get, uh, you know, uh, that content going. Uh, we're trying to get you to uh, really excel when it comes to your final exam. Otherwise, your favorite uncle will see you again another time. Hope that you will be with us for the rest of the week uh, to look at more solutions. For me, for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.